Further questions? Sorry. Thank you, Councillor Beaver. Very good. Yeah, um, it's very helpful, isn't it? Uh, as always. The question relates to the dock land in exchange for the dock land. <coughs> uh, I still see this as an outstanding issue which hasn't been finally resolved. And if this pro project's to go ahead, it does need finalising. Um, and it seems to me that it is one of the issues. Uh, which could hold the project up completely if not resolved. It's fundamental to the pathway forward to have the exchange of land. So could I have a description from you of the current circumstances uh, HBRIC and RWSS is in on this and what the pathway forward you see to resolving this to completion where it's done, dusted and nailed. So um, DOC's running a process under the Conservation Act. It's its process. It's been through an assessment process, a hearings process. It's received submissions from various parties, including ourselves, on the exchange values. Uh, it's undertaken subsequent additional work itself, independent of, of any party, um, to assess those values. Uh, and I expect that, um, and I can't speak on behalf of DOC, but I expect that the uh, Department of Conservation will, will uh, We'll undertake a couple of steps around um, potentially identifying for the various submitters as to what those values were in terms of their own assessment. Haven't done that yet, but I expect them to do it. Um, and on that basis, they'll uh, there'll be a recommendation out of the process to um, uh, of whatever direction to undertake the exchange or not undertake the exchange. Um, there is possible um, a party party if they weren't happy with the result might choose to seek further legal recourse, we'll see whether that happens or not, um, but fundamentally that process has got to work its way through and, and it's not unlike, the, you know, it's, it's not unlike the, on a smaller scale, the process we've just been through with the Board of Inquiry is that there are various steps, legal steps that have got to be undertaken and, and rights, of, rights of review. So um, our assessment though is broadly speaking um, that even if it was litigated, there still be a decision within a meaningful time frame in terms of the overall planning time frame we've budgeted for. So can I just follow up on that and tease that a little bit further? In your planning and your budgeting, <clears throat> you are hoping for the best, planning for the worst, and planning for the worst as far as RWSS is concerned is that the decision uh, um, the DOC will make will either be no or will be yes but is appealed so if in the event of those two streams come to, to pass, you have budgeted for the appeal and the time, you're taking that into account so you're confident you can meet it with that. But what if Doc comes back and says no? Well, M microphone. Yeah, great. absolutely. I mean, I'm not going to speculate as to what Doc's going to say, I'm not going to say, but we will deal with that at the time that it's, that it's the, 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 the decision. Follow up question Wouldn't the prudent manager uh, have uh, assessed that as a possible option and then had a plan worked out for it in well, advance we, rather than wait for it to happen? Well, we have, and we've got a view on the legality of the process, a clear view, and not only that, we also have a, have a very clear view on uh, the values of that land exchange, and we also note that. Um, that there's been plenty of advice that docs received that the land exchange makes sense. Let, let, let's um, wrap this up. Uh, those that haven't asked any questions, Councillor Dick, you're happy. Councillor Hewitt, you have any questions? I'm happy with where we are at, but I did have a question around the strategic planning day as you know, part of the update here. And um, what sort of, are there handouts? Where are we going with that? Are you able to let us know? Is now the right time to let us know? Either sure. of your orders. So we um, we intend on probably on Friday to uh, give you the draft strategic plan that we're going to discuss with you. It's not terribly long. Um, it is a draft, and so it'll be um, in confidence. Uh, but uh, we'll certainly give you that as pre-reading, and I think it's 
a dozen pages. It's not terribly demanding. So you all good? Thank you. Councillor Scott, any further questions? Working along the table, pipe. Uh, Mr. Mohi. <coughs> right. Well, I just wonder now that we've sort of got through this report, whether you had any commentary. You did hear some of the argument around the SOI. Did you have anything you would want to add there? You take a chance, or you? Have, we've made the decision. Um, so. so there was a, there was a uh, I, I came uh, late in the process. Microphone. Microphone. Sorry, I came in late in the process, but I, I heard part, I think, of a discussion about um, why did the HBRIC directors have an additional kind of threshold about them forming a view about the return on, inv on investment in the RWSS? Do I, do I capture the flavour of that correctly? That there was some question as to why the directors would have inserted something there? Yep. So I mean, the short answer to that is that the directors of HBRIC have to be um, prudent directors. They have to form a view um, about um, the best interest of the company and the return on the investment um, and before they would make a recommendation to council. It's pretty simple and straightforward. It's, it's past tense anyway, but I just thought that you may you may have had something you wanted to add. So let's get to the recommendations. And um, someone happy to move the recommendation today? Councillor Pipe, you're happy there. Happy to second it, Councillor Scott. You wish to speak, Councillor Pipe? No, just to thank the um, to thank the directors anyway for the work that they're doing at the present time, and um, look forward to uh, to I guess the progress on this. Excuse me, seconder. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to express my thanks to um, the Chairman and the CEO of HBRIC in answering some fairly searching questions and being absolutely clear in the answers that they gave. It is really helpful. I think there is often some confusion through this long and protracted process. And today we got some very clear um, directions. One hopes that that you know, information is reflected out there publicly. This is a public meeting. It has been recorded. In the interest of transparency, Mr Chairman, one would hope for an accurate reflection of what went on here today. Um, the, um, we all frustrated the length of time this process is taking and the inevitable increase in costs that go with such um, uh, delays and uh, I'm very sad to hear that the caucusing is not going to make it but I'm glad that at least um, HBIC did actually make that effort um, and we just look forward to the um, outcome of the um, Board of Inquiry's final decision and what happens next. Thank you. Yep. No others, oh, you wish to speak, Councillor Grant. It's actually, um, very impressive effort, I have to say. You've gone from 11% to 35% contracted, countersigned in a very short period. I might have been daydreaming during a bit of it, but it seems to be a very short period. And over a very difficult time frame as well, very, you know, challenging to you. <coughs> I'm just concerned that um, just um, leveraging a little bit off Councillor Balford's prejudice and concern that um, farmers, and it's the first time I've understood this, that farmers who sign up to the scheme are not independently obliged to meet the DIM 0.8 and that this isn't some of the reason for this tremendous activity. Sum up, Councillor Pipe, you happy there? Put the motion in. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Good chance we'll see you in a month's time, I suspect. <coughs> Very good chance. Yeah, okay. <coughs> well, yeah, it is next true. month. Though. <laughs> right. 
So let's go to page 53, Council, if we could, which is the monthly work plan looking forward. <clears throat> and happy to, ah, good timing. Yes. Mr Maxwell, happy to take questions. Mr. Aidy, we will get him there. So ask questions of these others while we wait for him. Councillor Bevan, maybe. I might start. Ian, can you just tell me where Parks Peak is, please? Um, good question. My recollection is it's the Rohini Range somewhere in the. Sorry? Yes, correct, yeah. Uh, page 56 uh, to uh, Ian, uh, one, two, three, four bullets from the bottom is a reference to narrow road catchment consents expiring at the end of May. Could you give a sense of the scope of that, what, what's involved there? So uh, consents for surface and groundwater takes um, Quite a large number. I don't recall off the top of my head exactly how many have a common expiry date, um, and we're in the process of notifying those. Um, not sure when the ad goes in the paper. It might be this weekend. But it's pretty soon um, for replacement, um, and then there will be a subsequent submission and, and potentially a hearing process as a result of it. So, well, no, not necessarily. We consider them to be, they expire and they're replaced. Um, so what we would be aiming to do as much as we did in the Tuki Tuki replacements that occurred partway through the policy development process would be to replace them in a, in a way that allows them to line up with the eventual arrival of policy. Um, so that might be, well, certainly be a, around a review clause and clar clarity on that and potentially an expiry date to, you know, have them uh, expire and be replaced when, when we anticipate the policy might be available so that we can consider it against new allocations and minimum flows, et cetera, if they eventuate. Thank you. Councillor Scott. Um, yes, I'd just like to ask about the um, Cawthorne Institute work on the MCI, which was referred to on page 55, Mr Chairman. Um, this presumably is being done as a national... Um, I think I might have asked you before about this, but could you just clarify to how much extent this is being done for us and, and how much is actually being done as a research... Um, Yes. Um, Activity right across to the, uh, nationally. Yes, so this, I'm pretty sure this fits in with an MB, MBIE program, part of the um, work that uh, is being led out of Niwa. Uh, there's some recent reports have come out of Cawthron uh, looking at, a, in, a, in essence, multiple stresses and effect on ecological health. Um, this work um, sits in that and also is allowing the development of modelling that will, will allow you to say what's what's the expected outcome and what's the observed and what are the differences. So, so it's giving you some predictive modelling capability that exists on a broad scale nationally, but we're wanting to optimise our ability to do that modelling at a more discrete and finer scale regionally which in most cases typically involves uh, driving a whole lot more data into the model. So it's, it's kind of using existing national models um, and looking at how we can optimise what we have to, to tell a regional story and, and what other information we might need to gather to make the model run properly. Can I follow up, Mr Chairman, just for clarity around the funding of this? Is it being funded by um, MB or...? Um are the regional councils also participating in the funding? Look, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure on that. I'll, I'll have to check that and get back to you in terms of what, what our contribution is and, and what the MBIE. Mm. If, if you're happy, I can just email that to you. Yeah, fine. Okay. He's here, Councillor Bevan. Uh, just, just before Councillor Bevan opens up on you, Mr Aidy, um, <laughs> I, 
I'm just giving you a bit of forewarning. You know, it is a monthly work plan looking forward. I've got some photos of um, Kaibo Afra, and I was just wondering if you might be able to give us some commentary on what's happened, yep. what's happening, and what the future looks like. If you could, please. But we'll go with Councillor Bevan first. Yeah, so Mike, this goes back to a query that was raised at the Environmental and Services uh, Committee meeting on, um, and you can find it on page 15 of these papers, uh, the bottom of the first table there. Oh, sorry, bottom of the bottom of the page actually. Clarification required from finance. There were some yeah. queries raised. Have you sorted that? Yes. Yeah, though we've. There was some slight misalignment between our sort of financial hours being asset management, financial uh, modelling, and um, um, yeah, Paul Mantons, um, and they just needed to be tweaked a little bit. You know, it's, it's uh, so we've done that. So it's been tidied up. Uh, yeah, and that okay. should be fine. Yep. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, a couple of questions. Um, just in on page 54, when it talks about the uh, 20,000 plants that are being delivered in early June for wider distribution as part of the riparian planting yep. scheme, what, what is the process in, in actually that? Can you can you explain how those are going to be distributed? Uh, uh, are they for sale or, or what? Um, we have organised bulk purchase of a significant number of plants, um, and through that process, we reckon we get them at probably about 30% discount. Um, so, and people, yes, can purchase from there. So we, we provide the benefit um, to the um, groups that want to do riparian planting through that bulk purchasing rather than them going and getting their own. Are they mainly groups or are they individual farmers? Um, I'm not sure of the details of that, but I would guess that they're both. Uh, yeah. Second question, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's just with regards to the science, the um, air quality monitoring that is being done at St John's College. It's uh, PM10 at the moment, allowing for additional PM2.5 monitoring. Can you just remind me what 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 that extra monitoring is doing? So, um, part of the parliamentary commissioner for the environment's recommendations around air quality and understanding that and monitoring was that. Uh, there is some consideration giving, given to monitoring PM2.5, which is a finer particulate than the PM10. <clears throat> We're preempting that that's going to become a standard in, in retrofitting our monitoring sites to, to start collecting the PM2.5 information now. So we're, we're progressively upgrading sites. Entry to the the plants. Um, I'm just wondering, are they purchased locally? Um, I'm pretty sure we go out to tender um, and we tender various um, species, I think. Um, but I'll come back to you with the exact process. But we tender specific species and I'm not sure of the outcome of that, but some I'm pretty sure are purchased locally um, through that process and others won't be here. So as part of your tenders framework, do you give a higher um, preference to local nurseries and indigenous you know, varieties of species that are coming um, from within our again, area? Again, I can't confirm that, but in the past council has said no, we, should, we shouldn't be doing that. Um, but I'm not quite sure what, what process they use, um, but probably worthwhile just me updating myself on that and coming back to you. Yep. yep. I would be interested in, you know, that policy of, you know, support locals, they're our ratepayers, our customers, mm. and yep. if we're going wider, I would want to know why we are choosing to do that. Is that a yep. policy framework we can be discussing at some point? Yep. There'll be some existing <coughs> um, yep. reasons for all sorts of things, I suspect, around mm. plant sourcing. Um, but, yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Could so you'll come chat. back to me, Mike. Yep. Could have a chat, yeah. Uh, Councillor Graham. Uh, to you, in tomato mushrooms, is there any reason that they're not applying with their consent? Is there any, <coughs> do you think there's long-term difficulties here, or is it going to get re resolved? Um, <coughs> probably a bit, be a bit early to say, and, and, and look, 
just to be clear, we're potentially into an enforcement process here, so I've, I've got to be careful about what I, uh, I can say. The, the key issue is that they had certain things they had to have done on their resource consent to <coughs> mitigate odour by um, a date this year, is my recollection. Those things weren't done. If they were going to be done, there would have needed to have been substantial effort and progress towards them. That hasn't occurred. So we're now looking at what the options are and, and how we might manage them. <coughs> Should we get on to, oh, sorry, Mr. Yeah, Moore. Just to follow up from uh, Councillor Hewitt's um, <coughs> question, it, it's really not about um, uh, um, supporting the local nurseries in terms of plants, it's about eco sourcing. If you're getting plants from uh, other areas, that just goes right across the ecological um, benchmark, really. Suitability. Mm. So, but I've raised this before, and we just, just get an mm. <laughs> I'll give you more than an mm, and, uh, yeah, once I ask the questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other questions? Questions. We, we'll have a look at Kopawafra. I've got some photos here, I think. Should we put them up and then um, and then ask Mike to give us a bit of an update about what's going on? If we could. Well, while we're waiting, I, I will say that in, there have been a number of discussions in the when the in the biodiversity group, the issue has been raised a number of times about. Uh, sourcing of, of plant material and trees and so forth and how that decision is being made and, and what the appropriateness from a biodiversity standpoint is of various uh, uh, trees that would be appropriate or plantings that would be appropriate in our region, et cetera, et cetera. So it is an issue that is, causes a certain amount of angst out there. So it would be good to hear this 